Hello, you're listening to Reviewing History, your comedy history podcast. I'm filmmaker and teacher Brian Rupert, joined here by... As always, Stephen Dagliaco. And... And G, y'all. <laughs> That was a good one. You really started to run with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have we have a special guest with us today. Uh, I picked this movie specifically for our guest. We have none other than a TSD town legend, Frank Five. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Excited to be here. Nice to Splendid. have you. So, obviously, this movie's about the DeLorean. I picked you because you famously have a DeLorean. Yes. You How, still have one. I still have it. How long did you, like, want that car for? I think pretty much like everyone else, the minute I saw it in the movie Back to the Future, 1985, I wanted one ever since I was a kid and finally was able to get it. I've had it about six years now. Does yours fly? Oh, okay. So fairly recent. (laughs) Yeah, fairly recent. Does yours fly? If if you have enough alcohol in you, it'll fly. (laughs) We do not support drinking and driving. No. Uh, No, I do. (laughs) Oh, you do? Okay. (laughs) Drinking and flying. Yeah. Yeah. How does the car drive? Car drives beautifully. Have you had it since the 80s? No, you said six years. Yeah, I had it about six years. Um, You know, I know that the car gets a really, really bad rap, but I knock on wood. Does it? I'm not a car guy, are you? I am a car guy. Okay. Yeah. And the DeLorean is, is famous for being one of the worst engineered cars out there. Um, you know, we'll talk about. But that was through necessity. If you were to uh, kind of go off what the movie says and what I looked up this morning, <laughs> <laughs> what Wikipedia says. Yeah. But, I mean, it was it's 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 a it was just a, a perfect storm waiting to happen. I mean, you know, I don't I don't want to go too far off track. Yeah. But, no. You know. Oh, by all means. The go. people the people who built the car. I mean, these are people who. Uh, never had a job, right? Let alone working <laughs> in a car factory. So it, the cars are famous for just uh, breaking They're down and impoverished I- Irishmen. Yeah, yeah. Who, but like, they live in slums. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't say that. <laughs> well, he has the shirt on too. Yeah, it's on the swear. Yeah. So you love your car. I love my car. I love my car. I never had any trouble with it. Mm-hmm. It's always started right up, driven for me. Uh, you know, people always come up to me when I'm driving it. Um, I can't say enough thanks things about the car. It will be a car that I will never sell. I've already my niece is getting married uh, in in uh, August, and I've already promised to will the car to her and her husband. That's wow. cool. Oh, that's so, awesome. So you know, it's it's cool. we, uh, we, now we. it's from it's from eighty two, obviously. The my car, yeah. The, they made the car for three years, mm-hmm. and that's even not true. True, but right. uh, 81, 82, and eighty three. Mm-hmm. Eighty three are not really 83 model cars. They What they did was they had a bunch of them left over from 82. The company went bankrupt in 82. They just slapped different VINs on the 82s and called them 83s. Wow. <laughs> which model is the, which year is back to the Back to the Future year, the 83? The Back to the Future model, I believe, is in, I don't think it's 83. I think it's an 80, it might be an 81 or an 82. I'm, it's I'm, the one with a grooved hood. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just fascinated by having a car that's that old. Like, what's the mileage on that thing? My particular car has forty six thousand miles on it. Wow! So it's it's practically new. Yeah, I mean, for the most part. I mean, there's some people that I know that have Deloreans, like the Delorean clubs mm-hmm. and stuff. They have even fewer miles. You know, they don't drive it. I believe in. I think cars are made to be driven. Sure. So some people treat it almost like a museum piece rather than driving it. Absolutely. You probably get a lot of heads turning as you go down the street. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody fact, knows it. Everybody knows. You know what's funny about it is the fact that it's a it appeals to car people because you don't sure. see it, but it's really popular because of the movie Back Obviously, to the Future. Kids yeah. know it. I mean, before I had the DeLorean, I had a 1959 Cadillac, which is considered the Elvis wow. Cadillac, the one mm-hmm. with the big fins and everything. Yeah. Okay. More people come up to me when I was driving the De- when I'm driving the DeLorean than ever came up to me sure. when I had that 22 foot long Cadillac. Do kids today know it? Like, is Back to the Future still as beloved as it was when we I think a lot of we them know it. You know what, though? I guarantee you, if you're in, like, a parking lot and the doors open up, kids don't see that. It's going to catch eyes. Right. Sure. Because is, is that? I think that's the first car that had doors open like that, right? Yeah. And there's other cars that did that, like expensive cars. Don't Teslas do that? Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Is Tesla, it easier to park with those? Because you don't have yes, to open outward, right? Because so. actually you can park, you only need like nine inches of clearance. Wow. Because what happens is the doors actually go straight up. So mm-hmm. you can be very close to wherever you're, you know, whatever's next to you um, and not have to worry about swinging the door up, swing the, you know, swing the doors. Um, yeah. They go up instead of swinging the doors out. Yeah. 
Now, when you need parts for a DeLorean, is it a pain in the ass? Like when you need to? No. No. Company's still in business. Technically, really? yeah. Um, there's a bunch of different locations, a bunch of different vendors. The main company is located in Humble, Texas. Um, what happened was there was a British um, mechanic mm-hmm. who purchased all of the remaining inventory. So it was, it's kind of funny. When the company went bankrupt, they call it receivership. When the company went bankrupt, the people who owned big lots <laughs> bought oh. all of the inventory. Okay, they bought everything. Everything. Everything lock, stock, and barrel, and they brought it to Ohio, I believe it was where it was. And then this guy came in, and then he just bought everything from them, and he created what is called DMC Texas, which is the main hub. So right now, there's only 6,000 DeLoreans on the road right now. They have enough parts in the factory that they can make another 9,000 cars if they wanted to. Wow. Oh, wow. There's only a couple of parts that aren't available anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, But for the most part, you can pretty much, like, I can call them tomorrow, and I could say, I need a new engine. And they will send me a new 1982 engine Mm -hmm. that has zero miles. That's just been sitting there. Just been sitting there for years. Engines in the rear, right? Engines in the rear. Yeah. Six-cylinder. Huh. Weak, weak engine. You, <laughs> weak. you got a flux capacitor? I do have a flux capacitor. It came with it when I bought oh, it. Oh, yeah? The, the kid who owned it before me. And you know what's funny? The kid that I bought it off of, he um, he was selling it simply because he wanted to buy a Tesla. So he needed my money to put as a, de- a deposit down for the Tesla. Huh. So when I bought it, he had the flux capacitor in the back. He purchased one and put it back there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I drive with it on sometimes. That's it's funny. cool. That's wild. Yeah. But That's yeah, awesome. If you haven't figured it out, we're going to be talking about the DeLorean story. <laughs> a film called Driven. Yes. yes. 2019. 2019? Now, had anyone at this table seen it before? I hadn't even heard of it. Never knew it existed. Didn't know this existed <laughs> yeah. until you told me. I yeah. saw it. Had you seen it? I had seen it a couple of times. Yeah, okay. It's yeah. horrible. You know what? <laughs> it's fucking shit. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not supposed to swear in your podcast. No, no, oh, no. no swear yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, then it's fucking horse shit. We are on, <laughs> we're on YouTube, but... Uh, um, <laughs> sorry, I just no, no, dinged no, your we, monitor. We, then I guess I'm going to be in the minority because I, I kind of enjoyed the movie. I like the movie. Yeah. I'm you with like, you. You liked 80 for Brady, too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's true. Yeah. We, we were just <laughs> watching true. 80 for Brady, which for anyone who doesn't know, is a story about four old ladies who go to the Super Bowl. It's based on a true story. You said you wanted to do it on this is show. Brian's favorite movie, apparently. <laughs> he loves it. He likes he likes Jane Fonda. And he wept at the end. I Wonder love Wonder Hanoi Wonder. Jane. Yeah. <laughs> Anoi, Anoi Jane. Who would have guessed that they won at the end? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this movie, um, it feels a little weird, especially in the beginning. Like, I... I'd almost felt like a Tim and Eric sketch to me. Like the yeah, act, you said that. The in tone is odd, and the acting is weird and slow, it's and doesn't too fast. doesn't feel like the way humans talk to each yes. other. But then as it yeah. goes on, you kind of get used to it, and you start to like it. Well, that's like the world of the movie, right? You know, yeah. So which is the real world technically? It's a real story. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hiding. <laughs> like he's working on his car in the beginning, and and John Delorean walks over, and he's just like, "Hey, hey we're how's best it friends going? Now. I'm wearing short shorts." <laughs> <laughs> It feels like a streaming movie. Yeah. Right? It yeah. doesn't feel like a theatrical release. It's if, rushed. The whole the whole pacing is just not I think good. the pacing works to its favor. Because mm. it's in and out. You yeah, know? But I don't like that. I, I, I want some time in between my scenes. I want some time to ingest something. I don't need that There's with every no movie. There's no time with this. Yeah. It, this it, is a movie, let's get in and out, let's go. This is a good, like, mid-tier movie. You know, that they just don't make it. It's like, yeah, that was okay. It's totally, it's right. a totally passable movie. It's kind of like the story itself. It's like, that's okay. <laughs> I think, I thought the story was kind of fascinating. It's interesting. Yeah. It, it is a little interesting uh, for one part. But I besides that, it's just kind of like, okay. I personally sure. think, like, it's the story of the federal government railroading a guy. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> oh, well, they've never done that before. I know. <laughs> what, did, <laughs> what did you, like, what didn't you like about it, Frank? <laughs> What I actually, it's kind of funny. The same year, two John DeLorean movies came out. Mm-hmm. So one was another one. <laughs> yes, framing John DeLorean, starring Alec Baldwin. It was oh, filmed God. more in a documentary type of style. Um, Is and he then, doing reenactments? Yes. He what he's doing is it's almost like a retelling of what happened. Did DeLorean kill anyone? Because he'd be really good. Yeah, at how no, many, how many of the production staff were murdered? Um, I don't think I think the only people who really died was the audience, you know, when they saw it. But um, the the one with Alec Baldwin, the story was better and was more accurate. This one, I felt that the characters 
look more like the mm-hmm. the actual actors, uh, uh, the actual uh, people. I feel like this is supposed yeah. to just be like a fun crime movie. Yeah, if that's what they were going for. I guess it's. I saw like a quick little interview with the director, and he was definitely going for a comedic tone. I, th- I think it, it was. sort of achieves. I'm not even gonna say it achieves. It sort of achieves it. You know, like, it's light. You watch it, and you're like, "Is this supposed to be funny?" Everything about the movie yeah. is light, including the ending. <laughs> yeah, which you, you like as yeah. you're watching, you're like, "There's no way There's this no is this real." Happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> it's somebody who knows the story of the of what happened the, with the DeLorean. Watching that movie was the equivalent of having a colonoscopy without being put I'm going to assume you were a young kid when this all went down, right? I was, yeah. This, uh, what happened? He was 82, 83, I yeah. think is what it was. So I would have only been like 10. Mm-hmm. Did so, you pay attention to this stuff at all back then? No. Well, I imagine this was big news. No, no, no. I didn't. No. no. I remember when I was like 10 years old, probably, mm-hmm. my dad and my uncle getting drunk at like a family party <laughs> and them just screaming me about at, at me about this. About I, DeLorean? Yeah, about the DeLorean thing and how the government just was <laughs> fucked evil. up. Yeah. <laughs> and like, they, they, they framed him. <laughs> and how old were you? How, how old am I? How old were you that back then? Oh, like it's... 10 years old. So, so it was like your fault. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was watching <laughs> Back to the Future. They were sitting behind me, and they're like, you know what they did to this guy? <laughs> so, yeah. The first time I ever heard about the DeLorean, uh-huh. I was in fourth grade, or fifth grade, one of the two, and the teacher was talking about cars, right? Mm -hmm. And she started talking about this car that was better designed than any car today and, like, all, like, how great it was, and she's like, and, you know, the government came and, like, messed it up and no one was able to get the car anymore. The stainless steel. And that was the first time I knew about it. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Now... I didn't know about this story at all going into it. So I also don't know too much of the background. Now, I believe he worked for Ford. Pontiac, right? Pontiac? He, yeah. He was the vice president of GM and Pontiac. GM. Okay. He, if it wasn't for him, he created the GTO. Mm-hmm. And he also created, I believe it was the Firebird. 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 Yeah. Oh, that so was a huge car, too. He was oh, a big a deal. Yeah. He was a big deal. I mean, yeah. he was making... I want to say the equivalent of like he was making like seven hundred thousand dollars per year, and this was like in the sixties. And he left it because he wanted to make his own car. And from what I from what I found out, I kind of respect that, but kind of the way he left it was kind of cool. Like he gave a press conference one day, (laughs) and everybody thought like he was ready to like unveil, announce a new car, new new thing. And instead, he just badmouthed the company and everyone who works for it. Yeah. That's, that's how I'm going down. Right, and then that's they so they funny. forced him out. Like he want he wanted to leave and do his own thing. That's like taking a shit on the mm-hmm. desk as you leave, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like and publicly, he, he um well, is he wanted to get fired. It's like George Costanza. <laughs> oh, bodysuit man. Yeah, bodysuit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, it's bodysuit man. <laughs> wow, that was quick. And uh, he said, "How yeah. long? That's 13 minutes in. You had the whole. You had waste no time with that. God." Damn Seinfeld references. Um, <laughs> but he said that like he got sick of like every new car that came out like is just like a variation on the same thing. He wanted to do something radically different that he could. Yeah. And they wouldn't let him experiment, right. probably. Yeah, he did because they want to make money. Right. Yeah. Fact, well, he was trying to create a car that was like ethical. He wanted to make this stainless steel car that would never rust, and like mm. people would be able to have them for a very long time. Which obviously, in business terms, makes no sense. Yeah, you want but, cars to be destroyed. Yeah, that's the thing um, with when you're designing a product, you want it to die at some point so yeah. people have to buy it again. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that's why the car companies and the federal government conspired to destroy this man, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> it's what ten- your uncle said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's stuck with ten year old Ed to this day. <laughs> Telling all the other classmates, <laughs> I just want to enjoy the movie, Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> These pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go get Uncle another beer. <laughs> but Marty, another beer. <laughs> Do you accidentally tell your teacher that the federal government's garbage? <laughs> what? <laughs> you ever hear of the Gulf of Tonkin? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys ready to dive yeah, into, the movie? into the movie? All right. Let's so go. we open, and there's a courthouse, and. Modoc from Quantum Mania 
is walking Ted Lasso into uh, the courthouse. Ted Lasso. <laughs> is this English? It's kind of... You don't, you don't understand what I said? No. It is Ted would Lasso. You like, would you like the to... character Ted Lasso is uh, Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. It's his role in the show Ted Lasso. He's like this upbeat... Like, Optimist. Optimistic character from America who goes to teach an English football club how to play and be a team better. And it's a feel-good show. Mm -hmm. It's called Ted Lasso. Same exact <laughs> character he's playing here. It's identical. Did you have that in your notes? I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is he a drug smuggler in that? No, he's no. a... No, he's a good guy, but he has some problems, but nothing too major. So the main FBI agent is MODOK from uh, Quantum Mania, the new uh, Marvel movie that's, oh. that's getting memed. He's the giant head guy, I'm sure. Oh, the he, giant head guy. Yeah. yeah. I've seen the giant head guy. I know you've head seen guy. the giant head guy, but I know you don't know what he's called. He reminded me of the thing from the Ninja Turtles. Remember the Ninja Crack. Turtles? Yeah, the brain guy. Yeah, the brain guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. <laughs> so then it flashes back to earlier where Sudeikis is busted with an airplane. He has coke. Yeah. And we find out his name is Hoffman. Mm -hmm. Yes. We find out Bolivia is a shithole country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they love Hoffman. Disney, which yeah. everything's true so far. Right. <laughs> 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 We don't have fans with Bolivia, do we? <laughs> no, I haven't seen any yet. All right. <laughs> so he, they moved to Southern California in 1977, uh, Sudeikis and but his it's, family. It's yeah. like forced upon them by the government. Yes. The, yeah, yeah, they're like, he becomes a federal informant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they tell him where to go and stuff. Yeah. And this is kind of like the consequence of Reagan's war on drugs, right? The idea was... Reagan's not present. It's 77. Oh, yeah, well... No, I'll, I'll Nixon. Nixon's were on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this is the Carter administration, isn't it? This so would be Carter, yes. yeah. But it's carryover it's policy. A, yeah, it's all that. The war on drugs. It's the war on drugs, yes. Right? Uh, the idea was to have giant prison sentences for people that are trafficking drugs and doing drug stuff, and it was supposed to deter them. But instead, what it did was have people flip so that the government could manipulate them into giving up bigger fish. You know, if mm -hmm. only there was something that happened in the country earlier where something was restricted and it led to massive crime. If only we could look at something that happened mm. in the country earlier. Oh, you're talking about uh, prohibition? <laughs> yes. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so Sudeikis and his wife, Judy Greer, what do you guys think of uh, Judy Greer? She's, well, a, she's not bad at all. I'm a big fan of her as an actress. I think she's like criminally criminally underrated. What really? Else, what, what was her what of her bigger roles? She's in so much shit, and anytime I watch her, I'm like, she's fantastic. Eighty for Brady. <laughs> she's not in eighty for Brady. Yeah, too bad. Why not? She could be. She could play an eighty year old. <laughs> and, you know, they put a wig on her and stuff. Why don't you know that she should have been in it? Why don't you do something about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I remake it. Yeah. So we find out uh, Sudeikis is talking to the FBI agent. He's playing dumb, and he subleased his jet to cover for a drug run so they can't pin it on him. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, they move a lot, and his kids hate him. And just as kids, fast as I'm got, talking— You got that impression that the kids hate him? They literally insult him to his face. Yeah, but it's kind <laughs> of— At seven years old, you insult so your tongue in your cheek. father? <laughs> she married you, didn't she? Yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And it's like a two— They just have good yeah. sitcom time. Yeah, it seems right. like, yeah, they're sitcom kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and right now is when I realize this movie's going to move fast. Because how exactly how I explained it, that's how fast it moves. It's just rapid fire. Yeah. And they don't really mention it in the movie, but the reason the Hoffmans move around so much is because he is constantly um, flipping— on people from his past. Right, right. So he is constantly getting put into different witness Burning bridges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was a pilot, and he was a drug smuggler, so yes. you know, this is pretty spot on so far. Oh, for the time period, yeah, if you were a pilot, there's a good chance you were smuggling. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. A lot of, like, lot like of smuggling. Delta employees just You ever see uh, cocaine? cocaine Cowboys? No, I haven't. documentary? No. Watch it. It's about You ever see Top Gun? You ever see Top Gun? It's actually not bombs. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> packages of coke. Pure Colombian. <laughs> I feel the need, the need for speed. It's Clear it. drug reference. Ah. <laughs> He's dropping eight balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, Goose. <laughs> Looking around. Little pamphlets attached. Um, <laughs> he evades taxes. Apparently he hasn't filed, like, ever. Solid guy. Well, because he can't, that. you know, yeah, he he's can. in court and yeah. they're questioning him. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
Oh, but, yeah, is this like a little clip of the, the trial, right? It Before, keeps right, cutting yeah. back yeah. and forth, and you don't have any context. Mm -hmm. It is disorienting to start. Yeah, it it, it was confusing. Uh, it's It was actually kind of hard to take notes. I had to like, keep pausing. Like, oh, God, there's like, so much you have to take in. Um, but anyway, yeah. so we see him in his in the beautiful Californian home. He's with his yeah. wife and kids, and he's fixing up his GTO. Mm -hmm. Right. And out of nowhere, <laughs> John DeLorean shows up in the short shorts. Short. And does he do like a Captain Morgan, like yeah. puts his foot up? How's it going? How's it going? <laughs> it definitely feels very sexual. I thought I thought that's where it was gonna go. Like he's gonna like be a gay guy, and I'm like, right. what is happening? Why don't you come over? We'll share some jalapeno poppers. We'll hang out. It's just, it's just Knock gyrating. A few cold ones back. Ooh, you got a car. Starts <laughs> feeling it. It is a little gay. <laughs> a little gay. Do you think that was the intent? Yes. I think it's like a weird like Tim and Eric sketch. <laughs> We're best friends. Why not we become more than that? What would you do? You just move into a new house. You're sitting there. Your car's not starting for some reason. And some guy in really short yeah, shorts just kind of like Hi, leans up on you. Maybe you've heard of me. Maybe you heard of me. <laughs> All right, Built wait. It. You want to have a beer? Ready? <laughs> Who are you? You leave your condo one day. Right. You go outside. Hey, I'm Elon Musk. Elon Musk is fixing your car. Exactly. <laughs> But he's hitting on you. That's a nice <laughs> spacecraft you've got there. It's one of mine. <laughs> How big's your rocket? <laughs> it's ridiculous. So Lee Pace, the actor, is gay. Oh, he is. is he? He, he's oh, gay. He's, he's a homosexual. <laughs> but, so that's my question. Is this, and I'm not trying to like make, like I'm really not making a joke. Is this his gayness coming out? Or is he purposely like doing this directed to do it? I feel like it's directed to do yeah, it. Yeah, I think so, too. I don't yeah. think it's a gay thing. I think in the movie, they're trying to make it... I mean, when you think about it, cars are sexual anyway. Are right? they? Yes. Oh, yeah. Think oh, about yeah. it. You name... Usually people name cars after women. Mm -hmm. The sleek lines. Look at how people treat their cars, right? My I think they named Gertrude. <laughs> you had a car. Is it really? <laughs> yes. Gertie. <laughs> Dirty Gertie. Yeah. And I think they wanted to set up, like, Hoffman... Or not, Hoffman having a man crush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're kind of right. So my friend, when we were in high school, <laughs> sexy name. <laughs> I pitched that name to my to my wife for our daughter Gertrude. I purposely pitch old lady names like Eunice. I really wish he owned like the like a Ferrari or something that is sexy that will get you laid. And it's like, wow, well, we have nice, nice car. Did you have a name for it, Gertrude? Yeah. <laughs> like, like what? Henrietta. <laughs> But when I was in high school... It's a very handsome car. <laughs> like you, a handsome woman. It's a beautiful car for a beautiful man. <laughs> That's, your That's your dirty talk. Yes. You've been bad, haven't you? You hit a family <laughs> of drinking. <laughs> Jesus. That's dark. You went to the dark yeah. side. <laughs> when I was in high school, my friend's car was named Bird Shit. Because really? he would just let birds shit on it and never clean it off. Oh it was a, it wasn't just a creative name. No, it was accurate. It was oh a God. red Pontiac something. It was it was a shit box. Nineteen uh, literally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a literal shit. What box. we used to do is we would go garbage can hunting. So on garbage day, we would go around Staten Island, and as people put their cans out, he would floor it into them at full speed and send the cans up in the air, and the garbage and debris would go everywhere. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of my favorites is this old man. He's coming out, and he's meticulously putting his garbage cans out. And the thing with old people is they're so proud of their garbage, right? Like, old people care about garbage, the parking space in front of their house, and their lawns. Desert. Nothing is more important to them. Yes. So he puts out his garbage, and he's uh. walking back, and we were waiting and watching. The second he gets away, floors it, boom, boom, and you see the guy come out in the street like this. The old man saw it. Yeah, he witnessed the... the <laughs> But you know, for the rest of that guy's life, yeah. every time he puts out the garbage, he's like, I got to wait till the garbage truck is going to come. If I put it out too early, these savages are going to hit my kids. These can. goddamn kids. <laughs> Would you ever do that with a car, Frank? I've done it. Really? <laughs> yeah. And what's sad is I wasn't a kid. I went for a job interview. Was I think last the, week? Uh, I'm not going to say how long ago it was, but let's say that I was in... 
my 40s. <laughs> and I went, yeah, I went for Frank's a job. Frank's 41. Yeah. I got screwed on the job completely. I should have gotten it and I didn't get it because they wanted to give it to somebody else. I found out who the person interviewed me where they lived and I saw the garbage cans. I was with my wife at the time. Wait, and so I went you about, did this out of vengeance? I did out of vengeance. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm Italian. I, very, yeah, you're very vengeful. Awesome. Are you kidding me? Hell I floored yeah. about 60 because I had a car I didn't care about. Yep. Garbage cans. Everything went off. All over the place. Oh, I remember turning fantastic. to my wife and I said, now we're even. You know? <laughs> and she's like, thank God. <laughs> Do you remember what we did with the tires, Brian? <laughs> Say it. Let's go. One day, Brian got four new tires. We were teenagers. I think probably like 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know how to get rid of them. Like you had to do, you couldn't just throw tires away, right? You couldn't just put them in a Brian black like plastic a bag. Or something. Yeah. So... We put them in the back of his shitty car <laughs> and at four in the morning went to the Applebee's parking lot <laughs> and drove at like 90 miles an hour in a circle around the lot. And I was in the back seat <laughs> and we kicked the door open and rolled the tires out <laughs> at like breakneck speeds. <laughs> Probably could have got really injured. <laughs> <laughs> but the tires would just go boom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they had velocity. <laughs> had velocity. <laughs> you're going 90 miles an hour. <laughs> what was the need of doing? I mean, like, you're doing, throwing the tires away. It was away. just a cool thing okay. to do. <laughs> I was, so you could have just opened the door and left them in the parking lot. No, we wanted to see where they would go. Yeah, I gotcha. okay. Let nature take its course. All right. All right. Ready, pull. <laughs> So anyway, so Lee Pace comes over as DeLorean, and he's hidden on Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, and he has a he has a hot wife too. Yeah, we meet her, Christina, Christina. the fashion yes. model. Yeah, yeah. She's now a she's a famous fashion model. She's a real person. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Christina Ferrari, right? It's F e r r a r e. Ferrara. For, that's great. Ferrara. Yeah. Oh, that's my wife. Pronounced. My wife was a Ferrara. There was an A. That's why I wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. There you go. But she was an actress and model. She's beautiful, the real lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one in the movie, too. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. He's a rich guy. She's in a bunch of shit. I think her biggest role is... What would you say her biggest role is, Frank? I, re I remember her from being on, like, That's Incredible, which was a TV show, I think, in the 80s. How okay. was it? The TV show was awesome. You got to check it, it out. Incredible? It was totally incredible. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's Much, great. yeah. But it was way better than That's Great. great That's great. great was the prequel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this sucked, the trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> That's the last one. It's about being 80. <laughs> yeah, it looks like her biggest role is a horror movie, Mary, Mary, Bloody Mary, as far as movies go. But she had a big career for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, so Jason Sudeikis now, do you think he was, they don't say it in the movie, mm. but was he purposely put there specifically to get close to DeLorean or is it a coincidence? I think it's a coincidence. coincidence. He, was, he was there to, to get the other guy, the, the cowboy hat guy, Buck Compton okay. from Band of yeah. Brothers. <laughs> yeah, it was his job to... Yeah. Reunite with him, All right? And it just so happens that his neighbor wanted DeLorean. the big fish, and then DeLorean one thing just led to another, cars and yeah. And they knew it would be a big PR stunt for uh, mm -hmm. the administration to get someone like John DeLorean. At least that's in the at movie. least that's that's what they want you yeah. to think. Yeah. In reality, uh, this was a conspiracy <laughs> to take down a man that was trying to better humanity. <laughs> take that, right, now, Uncle Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the government. <laughs> now, What's the name of the uncle that said that to you? Mike. <laughs> All right, Uncle Mike. And now on that, so I'm going to reference <laughs> Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike, Mike rules. <laughs> Love Uncle Mike. <laughs> so here, here's my other question. Yeah. So DeLorean, it, according to the movie, is just a bonus, right? Yeah. Well, it's a big name, you know? It's well, we know later. And in real life, they were neighbors. That part is true, mm -hmm. right? So, I, I mean, I don't know how much you want me to get into what the actual get story into is. It. Yeah. That's what we do. You know? yeah, that's what we do. So, so what, in real life, John DeLorean and Hoffman were never friends. Mm -hmm. In fact, they the reason they picked DeLorean was... DeLorean needed money, and it was in the newspaper. Yeah, so like we see money. later in the... And Hoffman saw his name in the newspaper when he was talking with his, um, the, his contact person or whatever, and he said, I used to live near this guy. I could get you this guy. 
And that's how it all happened. So him living near him and being friends and all that, none of that was really true. You mean they weren't okay. going to parties together? They weren't going to were parties. Drug, were drug they, dealers, mistress, no. stealing dresses from No, the- <laughs> I know that seems hard to believe, but no. But they did live near each other. It'd they be were like neighbors if, at one point. It'd be like if my neighbor three houses down in like 10 years called yes. me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, a guy I've never met, but he knows I'm there. Right. Like Ernie, the guy I waved to because I thought he was you once when I was walking past you. <laughs> That's, That's a good story. <laughs> Isn't Ernie like 60? <laughs> Er- Ernie's like an 80 year old man <laughs> now. Ernie's an 80 year old man that lived next you, door to Brian when we were growing up. Him. And one day I was walking down the street and I said, Hey, man! And it was Ernie and it wasn't Brian. <laughs> and he just looked at me like I was an asshole. Oh. <laughs> what about I this? I thought you made his day. He was all excited to. <laughs> what about this? So one time Anthony was coming over and I'm like, I'm going to fuck with him. So I tuck my shirt in. <laughs> And I make it almost kind of like a bra, like when my belly is out, and the doorbell rings, and I answer it like a little sexy, and it's Ernie. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, and I pull it down, I'm like, what's up, Ernie? <laughs> What about this one? <laughs> one time I was leaving Brian's house and I walked across the lawn just to make like oh, cut, yeah. to cut closer to like where I was going. And Ernie came out of his house and yelled at me for walking on the lawn. <laughs> Why do we always fuck with Ernie? <laughs> We're not even fucking with him. He's just an accent. Just Ernie accent. cares about his lawn a lot. He does. Yeah. He must think we just love to fuck with him. <laughs> All right. Can we dedicate this podcast to Ernie? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I want to dedicate to Uncle Mike. Yeah. And Uncle Mike. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Mike and Ernie. <laughs> All right. So, where are us? Uh, so, we find out. He that, goes uh, to the diner. Yeah. And he meets up with the FBI agent. Yeah. And really, not much is known about the FBI agent in real life, right? Like, that's kind of hidden. Right. Yeah, I believe that would be dangerous. In the movie, we'll just call him Modoc. The character's name is Benedict Tisa. Is the big giant head? Yeah, he's the he giant is. head. We'll just call him Modoc. Um,. <laughs> Do you know? Does anyone at this table know what Modoc stands for? No, no. Modoc, more problems. That's what I always say. More docking. More That's problems. when you have a lot yeah. of ships coming, and you right. need yeah. Modoc. I need Modoc. Or the other docking that we're not going to get into. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> why not? <laughs> so Sudeikis is given a wire, and Sudeikis is given a wire, and he's supposed to go spy on. Was he an SNL guy? Sudeikis, yeah. Uh, oh, he yeah. he was yeah. Mitt he was Romney. Romney. He was good. Okay. In, In my co- head, I hear like Don Pardo saying his name. So Jason like, Sudeikis. Yeah. Yeah. He's in a Horrible Bosses. Yeah, he's in Horrible yeah. Bosses. Horrible Bosses. He's, he's good. Olivia Wilde broke his heart because she's a harpy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What? Really? Yeah, so they were married, and then she cheated on him, I think, with Harry Styles and shit. Uh, Harry and will he get had you. a breakdown. Yeah. Harry oh, will get and you. then he Isn't got- that guy like gay? Oh, yeah. He goes everywhere. He, 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 <laughs> he's Harry yeah. Styles. You just, he's just—he's a sexual everything. being. Yeah. You know, this is true. Steve had a cardboard cutout of Harry Styles <laughs> in his house for years. Yeah, I severed its head off. <laughs> I dressed no, up you didn't. It. it was. I did. Yeah. It was. It was there for a while. It was intact. Yeah. Yeah. You liked seeing Harry. <laughs> <laughs> No, tell, my, fiance, tell, my fiance put a cardboard cutout. I no, your, your fiance <laughs> didn't put one. Say how yeah. it got there. Oh, you gave it to her. Yeah, you gave it <laughs> so to her. So when him and his fiance moved in yeah. as a gift, That's I cold. mailed them a home a housewarming gift, and then I specifically sent her a gift, and I said, "This is just for you." Yeah. And it was a giant cardboard cutout of mm-hmm. Harry Styles, and she loved him, and she had it up in their house, in the room, yeah. for like two years. Yeah, I hated it. <laughs> And then eventually it started like tilting, and I'm like, "Oh, it's gone!" And we just <laughs> cut it, it lasted off. a long time, though. It did because also she didn't want to throw out your gift because it's like, "Oh, your best friend got me something I love," so I was stuck with it for like a while. <laughs> it was a great way to mess with you. Yeah, yeah, I respected that. That was one of the better ones you've done. I'll admit it. And so now Delorean <laughs> is having a party, and it's like a typical '80s party. Yeah. And just cocaine. And he does a lot of cocaine. There's drugs and stuff. Is there? I don't. I didn't get that impression of that particular party. Maybe there wasn't cocaine, no, but <laughs> not really until Morgan. He pitched his car. Not until Morgan had. He pitches gets his there. car, and yeah. there's there's a. I love the scene where he talks. You know, my father left out a bunch of car parts, and <laughs> yeah, he told yeah. me that if I could it. build the car, it could be mine. Yeah. Right. And I built that car, and like yeah, he builds like, up this yeah. legend, and everyone's it's a happy. Nice story. Johnny Carson calls and buys a car. He gives yeah. him. $600,000. Yes, yes, yeah. that's what it is. 
He, John, he's like, Johnny Carson invested in us. We're great. And I don't know how real that is. No, it's a true story. It is. So Johnny Carson, Sammy Davis Jr. were tapped to be investors in the cars. And Johnny Carson did get trapped in the car. Because the <laughs> no, DeLorean has a problem right. where the doors don't shut perfectly all the way. So what happens is you get what we call like um, like a trickle of electricity, and the batteries would die. So what would happen if is... If it doesn't close properly. Right. It, it, because when they made the cars, the seals and everything weren't perfect. Right. So all everybody who has a DeLorean now, we all have shutoffs from the battery. We just shut it off right, directly from the battery because it's in the right behind the passenger seat, right? So And this is something they added years later? This is something that... Uh, people who own the cars Custom now, modders they made did it. it. They right, didn't right. do it from the factory. But Johnny Carson got trapped in the car because when the battery died, oh boy, yeah, he couldn't, <laughs> you can't unlock the doors. You can't get out of the car. And the window, and I'm going to die. And there's no window. The window is what we call a toll booth window, so it's only this big. So the fire department had to come oh, and smash wow. it out. Wow, <laughs> Brian was doing. Yeah, car he's doing car <laughs> A late night host trapped in a car. <laughs> what is Johnny Carson? Oh no! <laughs> He's stuck. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I love having you here for this because you can like fill in so many details that we really don't oh, know yeah. about. He gets invited to the basement. They play pong on a glass table. Pink Another pong. weird pong. sexual energy scene. Right? Really? I wasn't you? getting that. Yeah, no. I wasn't getting that here. But just like, explain. Yeah. <laughs> Guys can't play ping pong? Because I, I played all day today. Yeah. So watch, <laughs> watch you where you're going with this. <laughs> you do. I fucking lost. Every fucking time. Hey, we're on Walt is unbeatable. Pong. We're on a oh, ping yeah. pong table. I came close. I was winning two points today. <laughs> we're on a ping pong table. Are you aroused? Am I aroused? <laughs> this is a ping pong table. You know, I'm starting to feel like Jason Sudeikis. I'm coming into a room full of fellas that are against me. <laughs> 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 this scene, by the way, is so similar to that La Ted Lasso scene with the um, with the darts. Mm -hmm. Do you know this? Have, did you I never saw Ted Lasso. I never watched it either, but this clip always gets shared mm -hmm. where it's like inspirational post and it's like Ted yeah. Lasso playing yeah. darts. Can you explain the scene? Because you've actually seen yes. the show. In the scene, um, he's playing darts against somebody and they're get, like betting that he's not good. And he like fails like the first two hits. And then he's a ringer, and he just keeps hitting bullseye after bullseye after bullseye after bullseye after bullseye because he's like, well, that's what you get for practicing, you mm -hmm. know, something in art. And it's like, that's what he's going to do. He's going to make you fail at first, then rebuild you back up. And that's like a little nice yeah. little scene for him. But that, the ping pong thing reminded me of, like, that clip. Right. Because like they were playing a game? Well, he, he they were expecting him to lose exactly. against DeLorean. He, and he's actually he awesome, able, and yeah, he wins. He was able to do it. And, you know, the other thing that it shows is see how pissed off DeLorean got. It shows yes. how competitive he he's is. He's very prideful. Right. Right. We also see him cheat at one chess. point. Chess. At chess. Yeah. 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 I think that's a little bit later. It was his humor yeah, that later. did him yeah. in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what, the, what you're trying, what you're supposed to get from the movie. You know, his own pride. Yeah. That's pride fucking with you. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, uh, one of the things I'm going to mention later on is um, I belong to this. I listen to this DeLorean podcast, believe it or okay. not. Okay. You're and, really into this guy, huh? Well, the, for, it's for the cars, <laughs> yeah. right? It tells you. But they, sure. But, but, <laughs> I'm not saying you, that I have a pair of white shorts. When you're not shorts. wearing the sweatshirt, do you, <laughs> you wear your shirt a little open, right? You know, just get the chest hair, let the boys breathe. You can't wait to go completely white. But what? <laughs> Friends he's told me he's getting his chin done. I am. I'm already sc I'm scouting models. He's going up to a neighbor. Is there something wrong with your car? Is there something uh, wrong with yes. your car? <laughs> I'm going to be John DeLorean, but on a much lower scale. So I'm not going to be dating models. I'm going to go across the street to fantasies after this. And whoever's there, I'm going to be like, hey, you girls ever been in a Hyundai Santa Fe before? <laughs> but um, I listened to this one, and, and one of the uh, episodes of the podcast was John DeLorean telling his story mm -hmm. uh, because he ended up getting religion after all of this, right? So oh, he was really? actually Yeah, telling, he became a born again. Yeah, he was telling his story to some kind of congregation. They recorded it. And He's dead, he, right? He is dead. And he said that one of his downfalls was pride. He sure. said because, he goes, I had many opportunities to just walk away from this and I would have been fine, but I felt my name was on the line, my reputation was on the line, I did not want the car company to fail, which caused me to do things I probably shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. So, so it shows right there that he, he knew he was probably Not to mention the workers, but I think they were. Well, he did mention that. He, he mentioned that, but you know, I, I, that's what he said in his, in his um, speech. He said, you know, I, I was worried about the workers, and then I was worried about how people were going to view me and stuff, but I just didn't mention the workers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
for somebody like that, it wasn't about the workers. That was like a little like, see, he's not that bad. Yeah. And no, he was a probably prideful. And if I'm if person. I'm correct, he got an opportunity later to sell the brand and still make DeLoreans under like mm -hmm. GM or something. In oh, the really? later yeah. on. In the movie he was offered a hundred million, but be he wouldn't have control. And he just wants to control. Yeah, it would be his name, but he'd be working for someone. Yeah, which so they, like, could, they could know, tell him what to do still. He should have done that. <laughs> In hindsight? It's much better than his other choice. <laughs> so now we get the part where Jason Sudeikis goes to the cowboy drug dealer. Yeah. And Oregon. Yeah, yeah, he fucked him out of $3 million. Is this a real guy? Yes. Really? Morgan Hedricks is real. Okay, what was the worst drug him? dealer ever for letting this Jason Stake is back into his life, you know, <laughs> and not just killing him? He would have killed him. <laughs> it's, not, it's not believable. He would have killed him like instantly for three million dollars. Right. Yeah, even if uh, the only way that's okay is if you made me a hundred million dollars, and it's like, mm -hmm. okay, you lost three. Sure, I want to kill you, but you've made me so much. But I don't. I, they don't really say that. Certainly, that would have happened if it was today. But I'm wondering if in this day and age, you know. We're talking about the early on in this kind of war on drugs era. Do do the drug dealers know that if somebody disappears, they're now on the take of the government? You know, th well, are they wearing a wire? It, maybe it's just too new that people maybe. don't know. How, yeah, don't realize what's going on yet. Plus, he know. has a he has a plane. He could be going oh, yeah. every it's which true. way, but loose. Yeah, left turn clock. Well, he takes the yeah, wire off. Right, with a monkey. Right, he, <laughs> take, <laughs> he takes the wire off at first. He well, it starts like malfunctioning, so he throws it yeah. in the trash. Yeah. Uh, he wants a 10% raise to do whatever he's doing. And we f see DeLorean cheating in chess. Yes. That's right here. Yeah, which shows he's not honorable. That's an Ian Fleming thing. What? When, yeah, when you read Ian Fleming books, one of his ways yeah, to... I just blew my nose. Y Thank you. <laughs> Flem. Oh, that's good. Wow. <laughs> that was... <laughs> that was Brian level. Ian that Fleming. might have been worse than you. <laughs> That was a good pun. I respect it. <laughs> but Ow. one of the things he, he'll do is he'll get like a billionaire, one of these characters, and they're little, like, one of the ways you could tell they're kind of fucked up is that they have all this money, all this power, but they're so petty, they'll still cheat at little things like that mm -hmm. oh. to win when they don't need to. And it's kind of like the it's movie right. pulling a little Ian Fleming. Like, look, right. DeLorean's fucked up. We saw him as a sore loser. He's cheating in chess against a child, if I recall. No, I, I think it's like his wife. Oh, it's his yeah, wife, it's yeah. Wife. Well, that I understand now. You can't have them thinking they're smarter than you. <laughs> you got to keep that shit in check. <laughs> you got another place. Yeah. <laughs> well, she doesn't listen. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. It allows me to say a lot of things I normally wouldn't say. <laughs> and then, hey, he thinks I'm 90% bullshit. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. But she is. Yeah, he is. Uh, we find out that Hoffman is a fake name. Right. Yep. You know, no one knows what the guy's real name is. Mm -hmm. Is this when he suggests the uh, the Ireland thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, in the movie, it's Jason Sudeikis' character who comes up with the idea. Well, it's yes. right now we find out John DeLorean is talking to him, and Delor and Jason Sudeikis is doing his hustler thing. He's like, there's always a deal to be made. Yeah. Yeah. And DeLorean is, like, freaked out about $90 million. Yeah, he has to raise $90 million. Mm -hmm. So he puts it in a war-torn... <laughs> you know, he puts his factory in a war-torn, fucked-up country and has the British government, like, endorse tons of money into it, you know? Puts it in uh, Ulster, Ulster? Yeah, Northern Ireland. <laughs> this is the height of the troubles. Yes. The cranberries are going to sing about this in 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> so, like, what, what, actually, what ended up really happening was, I mean, Hoffman had nothing to do with it. Uh, DeLorean wanted to create this car company. He didn't have enough money to create it. So what he did was he shopped it around to different places, to different governments, and whoever was going to give him the most money is where he was going to put the factory. In fact, the, the right up until the last minute, the factory was supposed to go in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And what happened was um, the – I don't remember who the well, – you're the history person. Who was before Margaret Thatcher? Oh, oh God. Do you remember? Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, let's so see. anyway, he went to the English government and they said... They were in horrible economic times. Yes, and they said, if you go and put it in Northern Ireland because of, uh, of it being war-torn and right. there's like 45% unemployment... Right. They just want jobs. Yes, we will give you, and I forgot what it was, like a hundred and something million dollars right. we'll give you, and we'll build you the factory. Mm -hmm. So that's why he went there. Right. 
The problem is that none of these people know anything about making cars. No. They just hire people off the street. And this is at the time where it's like still factory line stuff. It's not like machinery building things. It's these people need to have skilled craftsmen work on this stuff. And from what I watched this morning, the reason that thing with the doors happens is because these people just fuck up. Really? And it's like a bad engineering thing. Yeah. And And then... They they're Irish. They're drunks. <laughs> <laughs> Northern Irish. Yeah. But, but it, it's, it's so funny because um, when the cars were built, they actually had, in California and in New York, they had um, separate satellite factories. So when they came off the ship, all the cars had to go through a satellite factory where they fixed everything mm-hmm. that was wrong. Wow. It so it Northern cost Ireland. more money. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know? um, uh, and the prime minister was James Callahan. Right. Okay. Um, I never heard of him. Callahan breaks. <laughs> Just in in uh, reference to the troubles and stuff, I believe the manager's office of the DeLorean factory's office was set on fire by terrorists. Really? Yes. <laughs> the IRA? Yeah. <laughs> Shit. When you, when you listen to the John DeLorean um, um, the podcast, his speech, one of the things that he said was when he was touring the factory, the people who made the, the factory for him said, okay, we're going to put your office here in the middle and, you know, all of the windows and everything all go to, like, the secretaries and stuff. And he was like, why? He goes, usually the executives are the one who gets the corner the office, view. great view. And they said because... <laughs> because they could be cocktails. machine guns. That's what it is. That's just what they told them. You yeah. know, that you could get shot or whatever, and that's why we always put the executives in the middle. If there's one thing us Irish hate, it's a good-paying fucking job in a factory <laughs> where you can earn and provide. <laughs> if that was a fucking pub, now we're talking. Yeah, let's go to the Pradies. <laughs> <laughs> that's so crazy. Um, oh all right, so there's 120 million they get from the UK. That is that the real amount? Yeah, he got yeah. a little ton of money from him. Yeah, and when he went to get more later on, he couldn't because the government had changed. And now it's the Thatcher administration, yep. and she certainly wasn't going to be giving any government subsidies. No, to, uh, far, especially foreign companies. You know, <laughs> yeah, she's not about that. No, the Iron Lady. And, and neither what, is Reagan, so he's right. in a real bad yeah. spot. Yeah. And what's funny is when she took office, the company was actually making money, but she had already had it her mindset that she didn't want to be tied with giving a foreign uh, 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 well, a foreign company, company yeah. money. So she was doing everything she could to make it fail, mm-hmm. even though it was making money. They, she, she wanted him out of there. That's so crazy. Something that he said, like, about after they had I hate bankrupt, that cunt. They John had, DeLorean. Like, <laughs> I guess dies for the cars. and the British, threw them in the ocean. The British government threw them in Galway Bay. Really? Yeah, yeah just to fuck him. <laughs> wow. That's their Boston Tea Party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll throw away one guy's tea. One guy's <laughs> dies. I wonder how different cars would have evolved if DeLorean didn't fail like this. If the car you know had been a mean? success, the entire industry probably would have, been would have had to have so adapted. So much different. What's the, now, what's the benefit of the steel doors other than they don't they rust? Don't rust. So they could do that on any car, right? If they wanted. The weight's yeah. going to be more, I believe. I think today a lot of, that's not really an issue because cars kind of tend to get replaced. People don't keep them for. Decades. Well, they're not metal now, right? Aren't they all it's like, like shitty plastic? plastic? Yeah, stuff. right. But at the time, rust was like the number one thing that made really them have to get a new car. Oh, yeah, people rust had buckets. holes in their car. Like you drive, <laughs> yeah. now, rust now, now, now right. rust yeah. means Alec Baldwin's going to shoot a DP. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I can't tell you how many stories I've heard from like older people, people about being in the backseat of their dad's car and there just being a hole in the ground. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the bottom would rust out. You'd have I've, I've seen that before. And you know, in the cars. DeLorean too, it's like all right, the panels. Oh, the DeLorean too, the panels don't rust because they're stainless steel. But what people forget is that the frame is still made out of metal, so mm-hmm. the car mm-hmm. can rust. It just will look gorgeous, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know when I got mine, my frame was really, really good, um, and obviously the panels were good, but, like, when I went and I changed, like, the taillights, when I unscrewed the screws, like, my screws were all rusty, Mm -hmm. you know? So the car does rust, it's just not from the outside. I see. Wow. So it'll look shiny, but the inside is corroded. Yeah. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> so in the movie, Judy Greer finds Hoffman's wire, and, you know, he's like, I spent three years as an informant, uh, all this bullshit. Uh, his wife leaves him, and he's very upset, and now he makes the good decision to invite Morgan, the drug dealer, to John DeLorean's party. A disco party. A disco party. Mm. And John's dancing with women, and there's a lot of people there. Well, DeLorean gets a call from Carson, uh-huh. and... <laughs> 
don't sell me this fucking car. <laughs> what does he say? It broke down twice. It broke down yeah, twice. Right, and, right. and I'm that's not a joking. They're like, ah, oh, you silly old <laughs> cat, you. <laughs> Tell him I got to send him another one. And DeLorean looks bad. He gets all pissed. Oh, yeah. Uh, Judy Greer shows back up. And now Sudeikis introduces... I think this is the first hint in the movie that something is going wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now Sudeikis introduces Morgan and DeLorean. Yeah. And now <laughs> Morgan's girlfriend or wife uh, is running around <laughs> drunk. Yes. She takes a top off. Yeah, and she has a oh, great cool. rack. She steals her dress. Uh, Aaron Moriarty, very hot. Mm -hmm. Jim uh, Snart's coke, did it, laced with angels. Does anyone stuff. here watch The Boys? Oh, I started boys? it. I didn't no. finish it, though. The Boys, it's a pretty good show. I like it, but she's like the main girl in it. Oh, yeah? She's very attractive, yeah. So I like this movie for that. Mm -hmm. Tits, always a plus in a movie. Yeah. Very rare these days. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, I get. You know what? In the, modern uh, movies, uh, yeah, pretty much. There is yeah. a lot more on TV shows. Like streaming networks have tits mm -hmm. constantly. Like any, you do any like big show, basically, it's there constantly. Saw you on the TV. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Last, I Last Kingdom. <laughs> Early seasons Early of Game of yeah. Thrones. He snorts cork with cork. 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 Yeah. He snorts cork. <laughs> That's yeah. in Southern. He on. just. <laughs> 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 he snorts coke with angel dust and he freaks out. Yes. <laughs> Which, and uh, she's being yeah. a menace and she jumps in the pool. And she kisses uh, the wife, right? Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. She's a wild cat, and that one. DeLorean gives Sudeikis a little mini car, like icon, like a mini DeLorean. <laughs> he yeah, he, thinks, yeah, he, thinks, he, and he thinks it's a car yeah. and he opens it and it's 25% off a of DeLorean. Hysterical. And he's pissed. <laughs> Fucking hysterical. That's a good one. <laughs> and then we cut to the court, and Sudeikis is saying the DeLorean is a shit car. And it's opposite of DeLorean himself, which you didn't see before, I believe. I think that's the first time you see DeLorean in the trial. Yes, now we know yeah. why he's there, because yeah. well, they kind, hide that. You kind of know why he's there. You still are not sure yet. Because I, uh, me not knowing about any you of this. You didn't know any of this. I right? didn't know any of this. I did not care. <laughs> in my life, I never thought of a, of thinking of this entire. You're situation. not even a big Back to the Future yeah, fan. Back, you, That's also why. Yeah, I, I think we need to confront you about this <laughs> uh, later. Intervention? No, no right now. Right, right now. now. Okay, what's, sure. What's wrong with you? I've seen the first Back to the Future. The second one, I haven't seen enough to even quote it, and the third, I've never seen. Does that qualify as un-American? <laughs> I think so. Like, I, if it was the '50s, could we report him to MacArthur? <laughs> <laughs> What yeah. would Uncle Mike say yeah. to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mike would probably be disappointed. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm also not a car person. You don't know so. Marty McFly. <laughs> no, I know Marty McFly. <laughs> so you got to hear this. <laughs> Molly Gibson is the secretary, and she's a real person, I believe, right? The, I the person that DeLorean is secretly having an affair with, right? At least that's what they think she, he she's was. Early in it, yeah. I didn't really pay much attention to that whole thing because it uh, goes nowhere. Well, no, there, she plays a, a pretty important role. Does she? She is the informant. She she's the whistleblower. She leaks that DeLorean is screwed. Mm -hmm. to, oh right, to yes, the newspapers. So then he has to because go she's find a scorned money. lover. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so she he has to go out and find new cash. And they say DeLorean can't make the payroll. He sold three k out of eight k cars. There's secret, three thousand out of eight thousand yeah, cars. Secret Swiss bank accounts and. There's a bunch of stuff not working. He needs $30 million in 10 days. In 10 days. And the yeah. reason that is is because all of the problems with the car, they estimated that it would take like five years to, to fix all of it, and they needed to get the cars out, you know, in mm. time. So they tried to do all of that in a matter of like 18 months. They tried to rush it. Right, and it didn't work yeah, out. It works. So now they're strapped for cash, so they have to get all this money to... Keep, just to stay, keep the keep in business, right? And there were all these problems with the car that he had like no control over, and that's why the costs was were overrunning. I mean, the car is called a DMC twelve, and the reason it's called DMC twelve is because it was supposed to be twelve thousand dollars in nineteen eighties money, oh, right? No. Um, what year? Not, I just want to look. What is that like? Eighty one, thirty six thousand, forty thousand, something like that. Yeah. So DMC twelve. The problem is, is that it didn't sell for twelve thousand dollars because of all the concessions he had to make right. to try and get it into the market, it ended up going for $24,000. Now, you could buy a brand new Corvette, which went faster, right. yeah, was the more reliable. Power, right? The engine was completely underpowered, but that's because he wanted a different engine for the car and couldn't get it, mm -hmm. so he threw this one in there. And uh, there, I, yeah. I read somewhere that it goes from zero to 60 in 10 seconds, which takes a long 
long time. That's a long yeah, time. Man, Marty would time. never have made it. No, <laughs> you're right. It's, it's a fake. I mean, the, yeah. the, what you yeah. hear on the Back to the Future, that's a Porsche. That's a Porsche engine. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a Porsche engine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you all love Back, Back to the, the Future, future huh? Right, <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, you're going to say time travel's not real, Frank. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, so Is your motor underpowered? Um, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it would be underpowered. I mean, I've gotten it up to like 90, 95 miles an hour, no problem. How, could you outrun you Libyans? Do? I could probably, <laughs> if they're chasing me in a VW van, then yes, I could do it. Did you do 88 right away? Because I think that's the first thing I would Once do. Once I made sure that it was safe, like yeah. I replaced your car wouldn't like explode. Yeah, I um, yeah. Oh, that's oh, first so you thing did I replace did. some things before. Oh yeah, yeah my car's yeah. gone through. Yeah, gotcha. See, I probably wouldn't do it, and <laughs> I'd just be in a death <laughs> trap going 88 down the highway. Oh no! <laughs> I'm about to see some serious shit. <laughs> Uh, so twelve thousand in nineteen eighty two is currently seventy thousand oh dollars. No, sorry, what? sorry, I misspoke. Thirty seven thousand dollars. Oh wow, I almost I basically nailed it on my first try. Yeah, which honestly 000. isn't unreasonable for a, a new car. No, I don't think so. I think that's pretty that's about standard. standard. Yeah. So now Sadekis goes to Modoc and he's like, "Yo, Modoc. I can get Delorean for you guys." <laughs> is there enough of pictures on the internet for me to put Modoc? It's this like the film? biggest meme. All right, good. Yeah, like, good. put that in the... <laughs> I want his face in these scenes, though. Modoc you know I mean? is, like, infinite clicks and views. You should put Modoc somewhere in our, like, <laughs> thumbnail for this episode. <laughs> like, right. make Frank 5 into Modoc or something. We'll get, like, a million yeah, yeah, clicks. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got some ideas. <laughs> Great. Clicks. <laughs> uh... So, Sudeikis and John DeLorean have a meeting. Sudeikis is like, hey, I got a way out for you. And they have this meeting where Modoc now is wearing a shitty wig... And the drug dealer shows up, and they're yeah. in like a like a conference room. Yeah, now, remind me. Does it show whose idea it was? No, I seem to remember it being Delorean's idea. They never say it. They never say it. Delorean in this movie goes, "I need your help. Can you help me?" He doesn't say how. He just is like, "You know, people make some deals." Right, but now never, it's never specific. It's never specific, and I don't think Jim in the movie ever explains what his past was to him. He well, just he says, knows like, he brought a drug dealer to his to his house. But I don't that think was, he's, that uh, was the, the wife knew it was a drug dealer. I, they all knew. They all knew. Yeah. Oh, I guess yeah. Then. Maybe. When you bring the crazy girl to the party, you know what's up. <laughs> yeah, especially when you look like that and your girl looks like that. <laughs> What, Everyone like a cool knows. cowboy guy? Yeah. Yeah, cowboy boots and hat. I like yeah, him. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Remember when he hid out in that sewer from the Nazis? <laughs> <laughs> Band of brothers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the drug dealer says, you make me nervous. Yep. Um, because he just doesn't trust them. I don't know how that went down in real life. Aren't there, like, but hours of the tapes, like, you can listen to? Yeah. Um, I actually think his, uh, who was it? Uh, the Hustler Club guy, Larry Flint. Okay. When the trial was going on, managed to get a hold of the tapes of uh, him, of the FBI coming into the, uh, the, the room hotel. and arresting him. And he released it to the public and it was on the news and everything. And this was no. like, so that they couldn't get a unbiased jury. Is that why Larry Flint got shot? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is after he had his whole thing, messed up. you know, with the porn yeah. and stuff. I'm sure that was one of the main reasons why. <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. He's just he, a menace. But yeah, the, he was, the everything but their first meeting was wiretaped. Okay. It was wiretapped. Hmm. So we really don't know that. That's kind of he said, she said. Bullshit. So <laughs> now there's That's like. what it's all about. <laughs> What? <laughs> and uh, John talks about the monkeys, and that's the code word for kilos of coke, basically. Oh, really? I thought it was Davy Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Last train to Clarksville. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm really. No, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So the FBI... I think, I think I'm going to run into an Iraq school <laughs> with, my, with my jokes today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so now we get uh, the FBI. They loan John DeLorean the money. Uh, Morgan gets busted. Like, Sudeikis, like, you know, gets him arrested. 
And now yeah. we get the famous setup where Sudeikis brings Delorean into the hotel room. And while they're driving there, Sudeikis is like, you lied about the father story. Yeah. Like, you yeah. didn't do that. He's like, yeah, it's a good story, he but it's bullshit. Chin. He calls <laughs> he him chinless. He chin's bullshit. <laughs> because he had chin surgery. And if you Is look, that true? Yes, I looked it up. If you look yeah, at the pictures of De- DeLorean before, uh-huh. like, you know, he's a regular guy. And then after, he looks like the Giga Chad <laughs> meme, where his chin is, like, down to here, and it's all handsome. Like Jake, J.P. Morgan's nose. Yes. Yeah, wow. kind of. Yeah. You would think when you have that much money, you stop being petty, especially he's, he's already married to, like, a supermodel. Oh, uh, man, Californians. I like yeah. that. They like, they also like to talk about their roads a lot. Oh no, it's the <laughs> SNL bit. But that's like really what they do. Oh really? Yeah. Well, they're like, I went down to Ventura and like they talk specifically about like roads. How many Californians do you know? Yeah. How do you? If do you it? listen to pod, I listen to <laughs> podcasts with them and they just fucking do it. Really? Just natural. Like if you're talking like a regular conversation, like, like I never got now, the they bit. Were just because like yeah, if it. you know Californians, then you get it. If you don't, then it's just annoying. Oh. All right. <laughs> but yeah, that's seriously what they do. Like, I listen to this podcast and they're like, yeah, so I went down to this place, Bon Ventura, and you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I went to Rodeo Drive and, you know, Jeez. all this shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's a California thing. It's like when we talk about Staten Island. <laughs> No, like every, we don't that talk appeals about. to everyone. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone they hear Highland Boulevard, they lose their it's the fucking greatest shit. place on earth. We all know this. <laughs> Nexus of the universe. <laughs> all roads lead back to Staten Island. So now the FBI is there, and before they go in, Jason Sudeikis tries to stop DeLorean. Yeah, he He's feels like, bad. Don't do it, man. Which is like yeah, no. he feels bad. Yeah. <laughs> so that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, that's no, bullshit. Honestly, right? yeah, it's <laughs> bullshit. That's just for the movie. Yep. And, you know, they're waiting in the hotel room and all this shit. And it's when DeLorean picks up the cocaine. The second he touches it. This is better than gold. Oh, yeah. They come in. Boom, he's busted. Right. John DeLorean always leads from the front. That's why he's John DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> he says that in the movie. That's great. <laughs> well, you have to talk in the third person. Yeah. yeah. Like my friend did that once. He met this guy, Jimmy, right? Oh, my friend met this oh, guy, Jimmy. Right. And this um, guy, Jimmy, would happens. always talk in the third person. Mm-hmm. And he would go up to this girl. Where did he meet him? At the gym. At the gym. Okay. Jimmy likes Elaine. He would say things like that. Right, and yeah. my friend, George, picked up this habit. <laughs> right. And my friend, George, started, like, talking in third person. And he'd say things like, George is getting upset. I, I know George. He, he got new sneakers around this time, right? Yeah. He got, um... Athletic training. How long is this episode? <laughs> 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 Do you watch the Infinite show about nothing? Is that what it's called? Oh, the VR thing? Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched it. Have you seen that? No, Are you a Seinfeld yeah. fan? I love Seinfeld. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only person in like the world that doesn't. My wife doesn't like Seinfeld either. Ha! Uh, <laughs> she's, you know. she's a woman. <laughs> yeah. They don't understand humor. <laughs> when, when we're done, I'll tell you a story about Seinfeld. Oh, okay. I got a good story. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> But yeah, there's a, like a an AI driven 3D Seinfeld show that's never ending. Like oh, AI wow. writes the script and it takes place in like a few different settings, yeah. and it's just an endless Seinfeld show. Apparently, you don't know about this? I no, I heard about it. I heard though that they yeah. had to shut it down. Yeah, like it immediately got like racial and dark. It made jokes. Yeah. It made jokes about yeah. the the trans community. Yeah. That Most AI. Yeah, oh, that's dark. what it was. Okay. Yeah. Most AIs go dark real fast. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so DeLorean's, DeLorean's arrested. 15 years in prison, but he's out on bail. And we get to the point where Jason Sudeikis walks into DeLorean's house yeah, and they have a confrontation and DeLorean's holding a gun on him. Yeah. yeah. And then this it's is all fiction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's a good prank. Friggin' if you look in the background, you'll see Jonathan Frakes coming out on a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> it's fiction. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this was invented by a writer. <laughs> We made it up. This never happened. <laughs> <laughs> and the gun is a lighter. They have a, a face-to-face, you Good know. Prank. And now Sudeikis is on the stand, and he ends up, you know, kind of covering for John. Yes. And he's like, he, I, you know, I can't say that he said it for yeah. sure. He proves entrapment. He proves entrapment, and DeLorean is acquitted. Good. Yes. Now, what happened in the real case, Frank? So in the real case, I actually have it here. (laughs) So um, there were a couple things that happened. Uh, First of all, the the government's um, uh, case against DeLorean just started to fall apart immediately from the very beginning. Um, One of the things that happened was 
uh, they were able to find out that the government backdated a bunch of logs that they were administering into evidence because they had destroyed the original logs. They got caught Scumbags. doing that. Another thing that happened was the prosecutor was telling the, I, I don't know if it was Hoffman or somebody, was telling them what they should be saying uh, on the stand, not realizing that the microphone was still on. So the court <laughs> wow. was cleared. So as he's telling them this stuff, uh -huh. the only people who could hear it were people in the press room. The, press oh, the this, worst possible yeah. people. Uh, so so they got caught, um, they got caught doing that. Um, and then when they were, uh, they asked Hoffman, like, why is it that you are coming clean? Why is it that you uh, are, are turning, you know, John DeLorean in and so on? So he gives this long, big speech about how he, you know, he wanted to turn his life around. He wanted to make everything better mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Well, come to find out in the audience, there was an attorney who heard that speech and said, geez, it sounded really familiar, went back and looked in files and found that another um, defendant or another in confidential informant used the exact same speech was written by, wow. by the prosecutor FBI. who was pushing it. Wow. Um, the other thing that happened was... We really fouled this one up. They <laughs> fucked it up. It doesn't even sound like a contest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they didn't even well, try. <laughs> if you listen to what DeLorean says about it, they never even put any um, witnesses on the stand. Mm -hmm. After the government was kind of done, it was kind of like they fucked it up so much, they just rested. <laughs> and they were like, defense rest. You know, they yeah. never did anything. Sounds to me like Uncle Mike might have been on this. <laughs> Uncle Mike was right on the ball. Yeah. I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know how much Michelob might have been in it when he, he was yelling at you, but he he was definitely on to it. Now, now, the drug dealer, though, however, still faced uh, prosecution, correct? Right. So one of, the other, one of the other problems that happened was um, Hoffman uh, was demanding uh, a percentage of however much money they could get. Well, like Ten, in the movie? 10 like in the movie. Yeah. That was real. Yeah. So that part was real, which isn't okay. something that they are supposed to be doing. Right. Oh, yeah. Because right. he's deals. right. Yeah. yeah. Because, what, because what's happening. Drug deals. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so DeLorean couldn't get the money. DeLorean couldn't get the money to go into the deal, but they still wanted him badly. So if they did everything on the up and up, that should have been the end of it. Mm -hmm. But they were like, no, we're going to create a fake bank, a fake bank president, this and that, so that we can loan him the money mm -hmm. that he is then going to go ahead and turn uh, to put onto the, uh, you know, to, the, to make the deal. Right. Worthy. And in the movie, that's all Hoffman's idea, and he uh -huh. he manipulates the government into doing this. Right. right. And that, yeah. that like, wasn't the case. Go fuck yourself. And, <laughs> and, and here's the other thing. And then he's the star witness that that gets he gets saves John DeLorean. They yeah. want the movie to have a happy ending where they want yes. Sudeikis yeah. to win right. and they want DeLorean to win and they want the FBI and they to want to not fuck. be killed by the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> and according to DeLorean, like I don't know how much you know, and that's the other thing too. You know, this is I mean, I, which well, we are I'm, going to be. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 the second we hit 500 views, we're dead. <laughs> but one of the things that DeLorean had said was um, he wanted to back out of the deal multiple times yeah. and you know, contacted his law office, uh, you know, his lawyers and stuff. And they said, well, you know, it sounds like there's a lot of people in on this because mm -hmm. if they're getting bank presidents and all these people, mm -hmm. not knowing that it was the government, they said, listen, don't give them any money. Don't do anything. String them along until we can get this to the proper channels, right? Mm -hmm. So he basically was trying to string them along. So he was giving them stock certificates in return for the money, but the company had already gone bankrupt. So the stock certificates were worthless. They were bunk stocks. They were bunk stocks. And the day before he was supposed to go and do that pickup with the famous gold, this is better than gold, mm -hmm. According to DeLorean, like I said, I don't know if this part is true, but according to DeLorean, he got a phone call from the guy playing, I don't know, one of one of the, the guy playing the um, bank, the yeah. bank person. The guy who hates Hoffman. The guy who yeah. hates him. Yeah. And he said. Modoc. Yeah, Modoc. Modoc, yeah. <laughs> and he says, you know, I don't want to go through with the deal. And he's like, you got to go in through the deal. He goes, we're already too far into this. If you don't do the deal, we're going to send your daughter's head home in a um, garbage bag. Oh, that's always um, nice. And then the next day is when he flew out. And they made that recording of him. Now, somewhere is the FBI and somewhere is DeLorean and somewhere in the middle is probably the truth. But if you yeah. look at it, they were so desperate to get a big name mm -hmm. for this um, war on drugs thing that you could totally see them not wanting to blow it 
and want DeLorean to go through with. And they the didn't want to go to Hollywood because yeah. in Hollywood, I feel like you could get any actor on like drug charges. Right. Yeah. They wanted. They wanted trafficking. Yeah. yeah. The government doesn't game. do anything wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're the good guys. We like them. <laughs> Smart stance. <laughs> That's a man who wants to see tomorrow. <laughs> Next episode, it's just me alone. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now what was interesting about that phone call about threatening the daughter is that all of the phone calls between the FBI and DeLorean were recorded, except for 40 calls. And Only that was 40? 40. And that was one of the calls that they couldn't find. Oh, oh my God. Makes sense. Oh, my God. Of course. It's coincidentally, right? Yeah, yeah. Coincidentally. Ridiculous. So in the movie... Uh, John DeLorean and Jason Sudeikis meet at a diner, and... I always loved you. <laughs> <laughs> from the moment I saw those shorts. <laughs> and your balls peeking from the lake. My we'll wife always have me. ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> we can pee together now. <laughs> he so, says a good line, though. What does he say? He says, uh, he cracks a joke. He cracks a joke. Oh, what does he say? Yeah, not everybody needs a DeLorean, because his wife left him. Right. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. line. Good line. What a, what a nice little humor in the dark. <laughs> I feel like that life. was like a Johnny Carson joke that like they stole. You think so? <laughs> I could totally see that being on late night stand up. So John DeLorean's wife left him. Oh, yeah. I guess it's, oh, not, yeah. I guess it's not true what he says. Everybody needs a DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing jokes for people in their yeah. 60s. <laughs> you got that one fan that's like, yes, that big fan. It's Uncle Mike. <laughs> Fuck the government, that big fan. Star search. So he gets the car and Jason Sudeikis, like they make amends. Jason yeah. Sudeikis goes in his car and now he... Um, he tries to turn it. Well, he opens a briefcase full of money. Yeah, what the fuck was I that? I guess he yeah. got his 10% somehow John in the DeLorean's movie. DeLorean's just like hooking him up. No, yeah. I, is that from DeLorean? Isn't DeLorean yeah. broke? He gave him the Oh, he's case. honoring the deal. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So sure. I guess he yeah. gets his money. He gets the car, Goes and it doesn't start. Funny. I liked it. Yeah. Now, yeah. This, is, this is one of two things. It's either a joke about, you know, DeLorean suck, right. or it's like he purposely gave him the car bunk. So he has, How did he get it there, then? <laughs> he, DeLorean drove it there, messed it up. Oh, he and he, sabotage. Yeah, he wants him to have to fix his own car like his father did. Because like Sadekis, no, if you remember, no, Sadekis no. said, I like that story. Yes. No, I, I oh, think what a nice it's... Way of looking uh, at it. I, th I think I think that you're going might be deep. what it is. I think Brian's right. Deep. Because I think in the right. beginning, his car can't start, and DeLorean fixes it for him. Yeah. So yes, now DeLorean's car can't start, and he has to fix it. But it's also, he says he likes that story, and it's like, I gave you a free car mm -hmm. if you can fix it. Right. I think it's kind of a little of both. I do like that idea. Now, here's a funny thing about the car. Sure. So they filmed this movie in Puerto Rico. It broke down. No. <laughs> that DeLorean was rented from a Puerto Rican DeLorean group. And they were really yeah. fucking pissed that the car was depicted as shitty in the movie. Really? They were like, if we knew the car was going to be depicted as like bad and not starting, we mm -hmm. wouldn't have loaned it. How many, how many of the DeLoreans are in Puerto Rico? I don't know. Ten. At least one. <laughs> yeah, there's one. <laughs> the group. It's in the movie. <laughs> and afterwards, there's like a post-credit script where it says, uh, John DeLorean beat 40 yeah. legal cases, and he never built... A car again, right. and Hoffman. No one knows what happened to him. And he says he may be right behind you. Yes, <laughs> that was cool. Like yeah, that was kind of neat. Because yeah. how many people you know probably turned and looked behind? Right, like oh. As my back was turn around and watch this fucking movie. <laughs> As my back, learn you something, boy. Uncle, is Uncle Mike still with us? Yes. All right, thank God. Okay, <laughs> it's like making God. a joke about some guy who passed away like ten years ago. <laughs> That'd be even better. <laughs> no, I just met him today. I don't want to tease him. Up. It's okay. <laughs> oh yeah, rip into him. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's the movie. That's yeah. driven. Yeah. Interesting story, I gotta say. I liked it. Yeah, it was. You know, it's it's, it's kind of a disposable movie. Not yeah, lie, but um, it's not. This isn't gonna stand the test of time for anybody. Right. No. no. Like you'll forget you saw this in like three years. It's a fun watch. 
Yeah. It's a quick little watch. You might get something out of it. And if you didn't know the story. Yeah, I didn't know anything about right. this when I first watched it. I mm-hmm. thought, like, I well, like when I, like, the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, Driven. It's about, like, I guess how he came up with the DeLorean. I'm bored. Let me watch this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's, this is a crime-like comedy. Okay. Right. I think that was the mistake the movie made. Take what? The, they shouldn't have been comedy in it. Because it could be a really good lesson about how the government is evil, and they just... They weren't going for that at they all. Didn't yeah. do they didn't do it. They, they, they protected though. the government, if anything. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want that. Imagine if Back to the Future just came out a couple of years earlier. Yeah, like, the car company would have probably been saved. In fact, they... Who was it? DeLorean wrote a letter to... Spielberg. Um, Spielberg and Zemeckis. Zemeckis. And saying thank you for putting the car right. in and putting it in a good light and everything. It certainly rehabilitates the image of it. Yeah. Completely. Nobody oh, yeah. That. If Back yeah. to the Future comes out in, in like 83 80, yeah. and it's not Eric Stoltz. It's going to be the biggest <laughs> yeah. car in the world. Yeah. Yeah, it, prob- it might have still been around. Who Certainly. Yeah. All right, Frank. Yes. I'm going to put you on the spot right now because I just thought of this. On TESD, there's a show where we there's the Frank Five's top five. Okay. Yes. Give me your top five movie cars. Ooh. Top five. Oh, this is easy. Oh, okay. Easy. Uh, uh, You've thought of this before. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have no life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously my number one car is obviously the DeLorean. Back yeah. to the Future. Yeah. You got to love, uh, well, does Knight Rider count as a movie kit from Knight Rider? Or you want, you want movies? I want movies movie specifically. Car. All right, fucking movies. All right, is so it then, Herbie? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not going to be able to cite the General Lee. Well, actually you could because there is a movie. There is a movie. Um, obviously Ghostbusters. Okay. Uh, Ecto. Ecto one. Ecto one. Oh. Ecto, Ecto one. cooler's the drink. Yeah, <laughs> um, God, what other movies? I mean, probably. Um, oh, I like the um, the ambulance from Cannonball Run. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um, let's see. It's three. I'm trying to think of another uh, another movie. I got a good one, but it's not my list. <laughs> it's not your list. <laughs> well, you could you could cite it. Yeah, what should. is the what is the car? Because you might know better. Uh, the main one in Gone in 60 Seconds with Nicholas Cage. Eleanor. I believe that's a... Yeah, Eleanor. What car is that? Isn't that a Mustang? What about a Mustang? The Batmobile? That car is gorgeous. Oh, fuck oh, yeah. Batmobile. Batmobile. Um, but which Batmobile? I like... Keaton. I'm oh, you don't know. No, you know what? Because there was a movie in 66. Yeah. That's the one I want. I want yeah, the 66 the, Batmobile. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah, I don't like... I hated the Tim Burton The version. shark repellent one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the best Batman. <laughs> um, and I think that was it, right? Or I, tried to I think you need one more. One more movie car. Oh, oh there it is. There it is. Oh. Thanks, get him. Here it is. We will be giving oh, this to one so lucky No, person. no, no. <laughs> we'll be autographed by that's so slick. Brian. Uh, <laughs> he won't be. It's just chicken scratch. <laughs> it's worth less now. Yeah. <laughs> So you got one more, Frank. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Aston Martin DB5, Bond, Lotus E-Spirit. Uh, nobody likes Bond besides you. Nah. I, I just, <laughs> I don't know why, like, I'm drawing a fucking... What is How about the drive? one that uh, John oh, Bumblebee Goodman- from Transformers. Yeah, that one. No. <laughs> Uh, the one that John Goodman beats the shit out of. In, oh, and in, in, uh, isn't Lebowski. that just a van? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Speaking of vans, let's do, um, what is it? Uh, the Mr. Dumb and Dumber. Okay. Oh, the, the shag wagon. The shag wagon. Right, yeah. There you go. All right. All right. That's a good pick. That's All a good right. pick. Did you I find, like, that? Did I like you find that? Uh give me a second. It's a solid list. Hmm. Yeah, because that, that that would be my number one. I love the style of that car. Uh Eleanor is a 1971 Ford Mustang. 71 Mustang. And yeah. and sorry, That's in the remake, it's a Shelby Mustang. Shelby. Shelby okay. Mustang in Both the two thousand remake, yeah. Okay. The first one in the original is a nineteen seventy one, and the second one is a uh t- G- Mustang GT five hundred mm-hmm. Shelby. The audience is seeing a bunch of car pictures right now. Yeah. Mm. Uh, if you love cars, <laughs> you're, you're, you're into you're, this. Yeah, you're loving it. What about that pink Cadillac from Goodfellas? <laughs> what pages do you have there? What? Oh, this is a fresh book, but it's time for ah. our favorite portion of the show, I think. Yes, I think this uh, is a, a let's, fan favorite. Let's page. go with the uh, the drawing of the episode. What do, what do you think that drawing is, Frank? Shitty. <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> It looks like, I mean, I know what it's supposed to be. It literally looks like a wagon from Little House on the Prairie with, like, a S- SpongeBob trying to jump out of it. I mean, I assume that's supposed to be the gullwing door open. That That is, yes, okay. it's the gullwing door. But let's pass it to them so they can take a look. Uh, you know, a I don't have much artistic ability. Holy God. <laughs> Would you have been able to guess what it is? 
No. I would say it's a car, but I would go like Flintstones era. <laughs> yeah, it's a vehicle. You know, it's like the beef is Yeah, there. there's no <laughs> there's no floor in that you because you need to f- <laughs> Yeah. It's a vehicle, but if you didn't tell me like the title of the movie, like if Driven wasn't there, I would say it might be Night Vision Goggles from Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Are they heavy? Right? And they're expensive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that is that's that's beautiful. It's not the worst you've done because you can tell it's a vehicle. Right. Yeah, I think it's you you've know. had worse. You've had way worse. Yeah. There's some real stinkers a, there. Oh, yeah. That's a mid tier. Definitely mid tier. So. All right. Let's rate this. Let's rate it. Yeah, let's rate. This. What do you give it, Steve? All right. Um, I didn't like the pace. Like I said before earlier, it wasn't that it was too fast for me. And you're too, right, furious. Right, right. too furious. furious, too fast, too furious. The, uh, the story was cool, but no, it didn't like blow my mind. I didn't know about it, so it was interesting. I gave it a five out of ten, like a average score. Okay, you know, six, six. Okay, yeah. I'm right there. It's a six. Yeah, it's six. totally acceptable to watch. You know, it's good. it's white noise. You'll forget about it. You'll it's have fun. You'll have fun watching it. And you know, if you don't know anything about it, you know, you'll learn something. Oh yeah, Frank, what would what you, you give it? Out of ten. Out of ten, I would probably give it a two. A two. Yeah, Whoa, it's really for, because I think, you know why? I think for me, knowing like the story of it, movie. I, don't, I don't think you like the movie. I wasn't that crazy about it. I know it's hard to tell because I've been so you kept it so close to the chest, you know. You know, you could have picked something you liked. <laughs> well, there's not many movies on a DeLorean. Um, we should have done back to well, that doesn't have history in no. the future. We can we can we'll do third the one? third one. Yeah, the third one. We'll yeah, the you're not class. thinking fourth dimensional. <laughs> Yeah, I think for me, the problem was just with the accuracy. I just really, yeah. that really ruined it for me. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I, otherwise, like the actors, like I said, Lee Pace looked like John DeLorean. Yeah. And, you know. yeah. You have a passion for the subject matter, and inevitably you're going to be a little bit more critical. Yeah. Unless you're Jimmy oh, yeah. the yeah. Hair Guy. Oh, yeah. That's a fucking 10. It's about Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's insane. It's fucking bad. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> Uh, that was a good episode, too. Huh? Thanks for coming on, yeah. Frank. Oh, thanks lovely. for having me. Yeah, yeah this thanks, fun. guys. Fun. Hopefully, eventually, we get you back on. You're oh, yeah. a great guest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you think there's another you. DeLorean movie out there? <laughs> we'll do the other one. <laughs> <laughs> What's that movie that recently came out? Uh, Ford vs. Ferrari. Ford vs. Ferrari That's is real, fucking right? awesome. Did you see that? I haven't seen it yet. Oh. oh so maybe maybe really? next time. Uh, like like, like legit. Yeah. Like, actu- like I, I know nothing about cars, but as a movie, it's, good. it's just fucking awesome. Really? Yeah. Cool. I didn't see it. fully loaded. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Lindsay Lohan version. Right. Of course. I assumed you meant that one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys want to sign off? Thank you for watching. And what should the fans, reviewers, perceivers there you go. do? Uh, like and subscribe. Do them both. Ring the bell. Ring it. Press it. Smash it. Uh, Frank, you got anything you want to plug? Oh, Frank yeah, was away, better. I have nothing to plug. <laughs> <laughs> no, n- nothing on the TSD oh, Patreon coming up? Yeah, what do we got? We got the Frank Fives Rewind. Um, you know, we got uh, Bro Side Attractions coming up. We're filming that tomorrow. We got you want to give, a, you wanna give a, a sneak peek about what it might be? For the um, Bro Side Attractions? So Bro Side Attractions, we're filming tomorrow a eating contest at a diner. We are going to have a bunch of TESD town residents trying to eat a 50 pound hamburger. Oh. Yeah. Just one. 50? 50 pound burger. They're sharing it. We are sharing it. There'll be five of us trying to, to do it. Okay. So Each looking forward to that. And, you know, we'll go around the diner and have them show us stuff and everything. Each. Huh? Yeah, 10 pounds each. Is and that they didn't call me. Possible? <laughs> is, someone, do you, is there any you die? thought that maybe someone may suffer a heart attack or something like that? Yeah, that was that was definitely a big concern. Okay, but we're still doing it because it's, <laughs> yeah, it's all about the fans. There you yeah, go. great. And what would Mike, Uncle Mike say? He'd say, "You fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> Get that Michelob. <laughs> Get Uncle Mikey another bottle." <laughs> all right, so. Uh, check out the TSD Patreon to see all of Frank Five's uh, antics and what he's up to there. I want to give a big thank you to everybody for listening and or watching this wherever you are. Like and subscribe. Share. Uh, if you like the show, please leave a rating or review on Apple or Spotify. It helps potential sponsors find the show. I want to give a big thank you to Tom, Steve, Dave, Bry, Walt, Q, Getem, helping us record down in the store, letting us do this every week. It's really tre- like a tremendous help. It means a lot to us. I uh, want to give a 
Nope. Oh, we have merch available. Check out our store, reviewinghistorypod.com, to check out the store, the merch, all that good stuff. You can get a mug. The mug, yeah. shirts. A hoodie. A, a hoodie, hat. hat, long sleeves. Maybe a green sweater. Maybe a green Maybe sweater. Maybe a green sweater. Uh, we don't know. Probably but not. Check that out. That's up there. <laughs> uh, what else? Follow the show on all social media, Review History Pod on Twitter, Our View History Pod we on Twitter. We got a mark. Yeah, we're 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 we verified. Got a blue thing. We're special. It's there, yeah. we paid Elon Musk eight bucks. Eight bucks. <laughs> we we paid like, the we'll DeLorean of our times eight bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice Twitter account you have. It's one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy him while. My, do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy him while he's still around, guys. Do you mind if I shit post on your account? <laughs> uh, our view history pod on Twitter, reviewing history pod everywhere else. I'm Brian Rupert. Follow me on all social media, Brian Rupert. That's with two P's. Right. Like and subscribe, all that good shit. Follow me on Letterbox. I rank ending. review. Follow me on Letterbox. I rank review every single movie I watch. Go check it out. Uh, see what I thought of this one. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>